what it's going to test you on. There's no mystery, no guessing. I wonder what they're going to test me on. Read it. 1.1. We expect you to be able to configure and apply bias settings. In other words, you should be able to get into the bias, know what that means. You should be able to flash a bias, understand the process of flashing. Notice that in the objectives, they expect you to be able to do something. It's not a knowledge exclusive exam. That's why every time you turn around, there is something in your assignment sheet that says go to the lab station and what? Do something. Learn how to do it. We don't have you sit at your station and just memorize PowerPoints and watch James Messer present about hardware. We'd say, okay, now turn that piece of computer around and you tell me the names of those components. Because it is about doing it as much as it is about learning it. So, in bias, this is what you have to know. If you understand how to go into the BIOS and, conf and configure the boot sequence, should I boot to the, the network card? Should I boot to the hard drive? Should I boot to the USB uh, device? Uh, if I know how to do that, if I know how to go into BIOS and disable the video card, the built-in video, or if I know how to go in and build, uh, disable the built-in audio, if I know how to go and set date and time, I can adjust and know about clock speed, if I understand how to turn on certain features such as drive encryption, LoJack, TPM, passwords, guess what? You can answer any question that CompTIA asks you on that phone. Any question. If you don't know that, you're going to have a hard time passing the exam. It's that simple. So, we're going to, I'll get you one. We're going to be studying those objectives. A lot of the labs that you're going to be doing in the next uh, period of time is you're going to be actually doing the very things that we're going to go through. What I am going to highlight is I am going to help laser focus you on things you need to really pay attention in that lab or really focus on in your reading material. There's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm going to say to you. Listen, don't try to memorize this. I want you to print it all out, put it in a notebook, the week before the exam, get it out, memorize it. Don't worry about it. It's going to something you're going to commit to memory the week before the exam. And there'll be other things that I'm going to say, I expect you to know this. I expect you to learn it. If it requires memorization, memorize, whatever, but I am going to drill you, evaluate you, you're going to learn this. But there's a whole lot of stuff. How many pins are on a CPU, on an AMD, on an Intel? How many um, uh, various, uh, how, uh, the various uh, pins on a DIMM, on a, on a SO DIMM, on a, um, a, a DDR3, a DDR2? Do you think I know how many pins there are? I could care less because I have a great friend and, and that friend is called Google. <laughs> I'm going to go find the answer. I am not going to commit that stuff to my memory. But if I'm going to take the CompTIA test, guess what? The week before the test, I'm going to what? I'm going to commit that to memory. But I could care less how many pins are on any CPU. I can look that up in any given time. So there are things that I'm going to say, print this out, print this information out, put it in a notebook, save it to the week before the exam. A whole lot of stuff. There's going to be other things that I'm going to say, you better know it. For example, most of you don't understand that when you log on, you create a special folder, a directory on your computer, it's called a profile. I'm going to make you learn and understand profiles. Because that's where email is stored, that's where your documents are stored, that's where your pictures are stored, that's where all the user who logs on, all of their data is stored in a profile. Look at me. 
you lose your boss's profile. Uh, you're you're fired. <laughs> okay. If you lose your user's your uh, your boss's profile and you lose you lose five years of his email, can I tell you it's not a good day for you? So there are going to be things that I'm going to say you will learn this because it's absolutely essential. I'm going to make you learn how to install printers. I'm going to make you be able to install printers upside down, right side, downside, because guess what you're going to do on the job? You better know how to install a printer. If you go up to your boss and say, um, I'm glad you guys hired me, but I don't know the first thing about printers. Uh, they're going to say, <clears throat> excuse me, get right as a check. Write his check and give him this big slip. We're done. We're, we're not, we're not going to teach you how to do printers. So there are certain things that we're going to learn. There are certain things we're going to really master. There are other things I'm going to say, print it out, put it in your note paper. Uh, if you forget it, no problem. Go to Google, look it up. With CompTIA objectives, I do not want a student going through this entire program and then spending three weeks, four weeks. I've seen people spend three months doing question after question after question, trying to prepare to take this exam. It's a waste. When you go into the lab and we give you a bias lab, what are you going to learn? Right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. And before you leave, you make sure you can do every one of those things. And if you're not real comfortable, you every time you get a chance to go home, you look at your, your own PC's bias, your own laptop's bias. You get in there and you master that. You can pass any CompTIA question that asks you on 1.1. You don't have to take 4,000 questions on a preparation test. You just need to know that. If you can do that, you can answer any question we throw at you. They're already got it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that you understand what you're going to do. <clears throat> the CompTIA objectives are very, very clear. Let's go take a look at 1.2. Here it says, differentiate. I have to be able to, before I go take that test, to be able to say, what is the difference between an ITX motherboard micro ATX motherboard and an ATX motherboard. I have got to know that. So while I'm watching, reading my chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, and I see in that reading material, here's the difference between the ATX, the ITX, the micro, I am going to pay attention to that. Because that's going to help me answer any question they ask me on the exam. Period. They're not going to ask you any question that you don't know when you really understand the difference between those. I've got to know what an expansion slot, a PCI X is, a PCI uh, Express is, a mini PCI. If I know what these slots are, which I'm going to help you in the next few weeks master that, you can answer any question on that exam. You can pass this test. So the way to master and pass the A plus is not sitting down with a lot of brain dumps on the website and, and all of that. It's really sitting down and keeping these objectives in front of you all the time. I encourage you, like on Monday, before you start studying, get out your objectives and just review them. What have I read last week that really talked about some of these objectives? If you'll stay focused on these four or five pieces of paper that I gave you, and you'll start checking them off. I got this. I know what this is. I got this. I know what that is. I don't know this one area in this objective. Let me go do some research and find out and understand this. When you're done with those pages, you're ready for te the test. You're ready to go take that test. Um, all of you took the practice exam uh, yesterday. I took two guys and I said, go schedule your exam. You're right. Go schedule for that test. In fact, they weren't scheduled. I said, don't study. Don't do anything. Go schedule for that test. You're ready to take the test.
So that is going to be our approach to take the exam. So what am I going to do? How am I going to help you? I'm going to use a textbook that you don't have to buy. Yes? Free? Yes? Whoa. Yes, we like, we like free stuff. I'm going to take a textbook and walk you through and really help you laser beam focus on the things that you need to pay a lot of attention to. You do not have to buy this book because I am going to really provide you the lion's share of the information that you need if I can find it on my <laughs> huge book list that I have here. We are actually thinking about um, going after this textbook next year. In fact, the way that you see that I am demonstrating it to you now, we are thinking very seriously about this method. It's an online e-reader. It is strictly uh, online. If you don't have internet and if you don't have the ability to connect to the internet and access e-readers, it probably is not going to work for you. Uh, but we are looking very seriously at this textbook for next year. So let me quickly get you started. I want to jump right into. I want to begin with, uh, if you look at your notes, if you pull out the note paper that I gave you today, if you talk about real computers, what makes up a computer? There are storage devices, uh, USB devices, hard drives, uh, there's motherboard power supplies, processors, CPUs, memory, display devices. These are all the various components that CompTIA expects you to understand. I, I can't tell you how many times somebody comes up to me like this and says, um, I've got a problem with my computer, and I'll say, well, and they'll give me some, some symptoms of their computer, and I said, well, how much RAM does it have? Okay, how much RAM does it have? Now, I know better to ask most people that question, but I'll, I'll say it just, and they'll say, I have 200 gigs of RAM. <laughs> Is there confusion? Yes. 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 Um, or, I'll, or they'll say to me, um, I'll say, do you, do you know if you have plenty of hard, space, hard drive space? And they'll say to me, um, they'll, they'll say, yes, I have a, a two, uh, I'll have a, um, they'll say, I have two gigs of, I have two gigs of hard drive space. Uh, because although they understand real basic what I'm talking about, they really don't understand the difference between those PC components. Exactly. With the CompTIA, uh, they expect you to be able to do the front, the rear, the inside, and know it by heart. This is one thing that I'm not going to say to you. Okay, guys, take a picture, put it in your sheet, and you can study this the week before the test. No, this is one of them that's not. I'm going to make you learn this inside and out. In fact, I'm going to make you sit down until you can tell me every plug jack component, front and back, and some of you have been with us a while, is this true? Yes. Yes, I am not going to let you, don't you ever say to me, that's a thing of a jig. The doohickey. <laughs> that's a whatchamacallit. Yes? Yes? Yes. yes. I expect you to learn this. So I'm going to go over some of the things that, that are sometimes really confusing because as technology moves on, you must stay up with new connectors, new plugs, new jacks, new componentry, inside, outside. That is your business if you're going to be an IT pro. If you're not going to go into this field, it is not life-threatening if you don't know it, true. But if you are going to be in this field, it is essential. You know everything on the front, everything on the back, and everything inside. But wait, is it, would it, even if you're not going to be part of the, going to, going to go into this field, would it be smart to instill know this knowledge in case you do? If you're not going into this field, you don't need to know none of this. 
Okay? If you are going into this field, you need to know all of this. Okay, I don't ask my mom, hey mom, uh, what's this front panel, panel LED on the front? You know what? She don't care, never will care, uh, and doesn't need to know, yes? Yes. I do though. I need to know everything on the front, everything on the back, and everything inside. So my expectation is you are going to learn this. This is not one of those elements, although there are a lot to learn. This is not one of those things that I'm going to say, take a copy, put it in your thing, and memorize it. I'll be giving you lots of those, but this is not. So I expect you, throughout the chapter one, and already, how many are, are just starting with this? You're just starting with this. Already, you're getting bombarded by plugs and jacks and connectors and it's like, oh my goodness. Some of you know some of them. Some of you have never heard of them. Uh, some of you have uh, a little bit of exposure. Let me, sh let me share you some quick things that can help you. One, go to Google. You can do things like... Well, we always get fun stuff here. <laughs> So notice why I went to Google. Look where I'm going. Where am I going? Images. images. I'm going to images, and I can uh, start practicing using some pictures on Google to make sure I understand various connectors and jacks. For example, this is a legacy connector. This is a DB Female 25. It's called an LTP1 port. I expect you to know everything that I said. This is a female port. This is a DB25, and this is an LPT1. In our business, as an IT pro, i got to know that. All my documentation, all my literature, all the technical stuff that I read expects me to what? No. i got to know that. Does my mom know that? No. That's a whatchamacallit. Yes? I need to know everything. For example, this is a game port, joystick. A lot of you guys play games. You've never heard of one of these. This is a DB15. Listen very carefully. This is a DB15. This one is a bluish color. Both of them are female. This is an HD DB15. It's called a high density. In other words, it's a smaller plug, but it has the same amount of pin count as this one, which is significantly larger. Guess who has to know that? My mom does not know that. You must know that. Okay? So there are things that you need to learn. You need to learn that this is a serial port, this is a DB9, this is a male connector, and this is used for serial. This is a RS-232. This is a legacy, in fact, every one of these is a legacy connector that CompTIA expects you to know. If you buy a brand new PC, how many have bought a new laptop within the last two years? Do you have one of those? Most of you don't. In fact, if you saw one, you probably wouldn't buy it. Okay? <laughs> because none of these connectors are on typical home PCs, but they are on every one of those 8300s that we bought last year, because those are enterprise boxes. Those are built for enterprise use. A home PC, they don't need those connectors. Those are for enterprise only. Yes? My laptop actually does have the, the monitor port. Yep. Okay. A lot of times you will have a legacy analog VGA. And we must home. learn these. We've got to get very, very comfortable with these connectors, jacks, and plugs. Let me show you another one that you must know. Um, here is two audio connectors. Look at those. There are two audio connectors in this diagram that I want to bring your attention. This is called, this looks like an RCA jack, uh, but this is called a coaxial SPDIF. This is a digital coax output. If you like audio, very good audio, you really enjoy the best kind of audio, you are all about these two connectors. This is the optical SPDIF, and this is strictly using a plastic fiber optics tube to, to, to connect one device to another 
and that transmission is the best digital audio on the planet. So these are two audio connectors that nobody has to learn, but we do. You gotta learn. You gotta know the difference between a, a coax spin-off connector and an optical spin-off connector. In fact, at my house, the way I get digital audio to my sound system from my cable box is this jack. The IT pro has to learn all of this. We've got to learn microphone jacks, line in, line out. All of that is your responsibility because when someone needs a complex PC setup for an audio setup, they're not calling the front desk secretary. Yes? Yes. They're calling you to set it up and figure it out and get it working. So it is essential that you get very good at these connectors, plugs, jacks. <coughs> Inside, we're going to hit a lot of these connectors and go through them. I'm going to talk about them. On laptops, there are things that are found on laptops that are not found on desktops. You must become very, very aware of it. For example, a lot of laptops have HDMI. They have display port connectors. Uh, with Apple bringing in the new um, Thunderbolt connector, we have now Apple's brought out a smaller Thunderbolt connector. All of those connectors and technologies, we got to stay up with them. We've got to know them. The good news is the CompTIA test is not going to test you on on anything new. It's going to test you on everything that's old. Oh. So although we have to know them all, uh, the good news, CompTIA is only going to test us on the old stuff. So make sure that you're comfortable. For example, this is an infrared receiver. It's red. If you saw this laptop in color, this would be a red area on this laptop. It's for infrared. It's a technology that I don't know if anyone has used infrared. It's like it's a joke. But, guess what? It's going to be on the... Come to. Yeah. Infrared receivers on laptops. So there's a lot of old stuff that we're going to have to learn, and I'm going to zero in on it. You're going to have to learn, and thankfully, never use... Okay. You're going to have to learn, but thankfully, you'll never use an RJ11 modem jack on a, on a PC. Most of you would broke and die. <laughs> if you had to open your laptop, plug an RJ11, dial up to your ISP, and surf the internet on 56K. <laughs> okay? You would die. I used to, um, really, I was so envious of Mrs. Hutchins because Years ago, where she lived, she could actually get 56K at her house. At my house, the best I could get was 48. <laughs> and I really thought that was very unfair that she could get 56K from a telephone line and I couldn't get 48 if I was lucky. You all don't have any clue how ugly that was. <laughs> All RJ11. I had a question. Yes. I remember reading at one point that there really was no 56K because phone lines were only able to travel, communicate at 43K max. No, the, actually the maximum was 64K, but theor that was a theoretical bandwidth. Due to all the elements of point-to-point -point protocols, you could only get 56K. So there actually thorough put maximum was 56K. Um, the theoretical maximum was 64. I am going to, uh, Jose, I want you to keep me on 45 minutes. So if I, as 45 minutes come, wave at me, shoot me, something. Okay. I want you to look at uh, points of failure. Real quickly, we're gonna look at what are the major points of failure. We're not interested in just learning connectors and plugs. We're, learn, we're interested in learning how to configure, troubleshoot, and repair. If someone gives you a laptop 
and the only thing you can do is say, I think I know what's wrong, here's it back. We're not going to survive in this field. Our job is to repair, to fix those things. A couple things that can happen with overheating is the failure of the fans and the power supply, the fan on the, the chips, on the CPU, those things can fail. Uh, Add-on cards can be loose. They're not plugged in firmly enough. I have this all the time with video cards. A person picks up a PC, moves it to a new location. By simply picking up the box, they move that video card in the slot, and now the video doesn't work. Memory modules improperly installed. I had a, a mother bring um, a SIM card, and all the chips were in her hand. <laughs> she said, my son, bless his soul, stuck this into the computer, and it sounded like popcorn when he hit the power button. <laughs> and all the chips were in her hand, and the card was in her hand. This is not good, yes? <laughs> um, I recommended she didn't allow her son anywhere near her computer again. The bad news was she probably lost her motherboard, everything. So improperly installed devices. Um, motherboard components, failing capacitors. Let me show you a huge problem. I'm going to go to Google. This is huge. It's a constant problem. We'll take a look at some pictures. I'll see if I can get some uh, good. One of the biggest problems, let's see if I can get a real good one. All right, I'm going to try. These are capacitors. These small round components, electronic components that are on a motherboard are called capacitors. They're amazing devices. They're used primarily to store energy. They actually store voltage, just like you would store voltage in a battery. They do exactly the same thing. They store energy just like a battery does. But if they're improperly designed, they can actually leak. There's actually fluid in these devices. They can actually leak out the bottom or if there's a certain electrical condition on the motherboard, they will actually, the fluid inside that component will overheat and the top of the component will bubble. And the capacitor fails. Guess what happens to your motherboard when the capacitor fails? It doesn't work. I've got a beautiful HP server sitting on the floor. We took off the case. And it took us about three seconds to look at the motherboard, and I had four or five major capacitors that were bubbled on the top. Let me take a look and see if I can find one. They look like this. These are called electrolytic capacitors. They're a common failure on motherboards. See how the top is lifted up? Everyone see that? Uh, that's one thing that I check. I, there, are, there are going to be techniques and tricks that I'm going to show you how you can go into a PC and in just a few minutes diagnose what's wrong. Something as simple as looking at the capacitors. Are any of them deformed in their shape? They should be nice and flat on the top. Nothing should be oozing out the bottom. If I see blood oozing out of the bottom, this is not good, yes? This is possibly an indication that this component has failed. So I see a number of capacitors here that the tops have actually domed. They've topped. This is one of the reasons why there was a huge lawsuit against MSI, which was a company that built motherboards, because they chose cheap Chinese capacitors and they, they literally shipped millions of motherboards that were defective within the warranty period, and they were sued. Now, today, we're getting away from these components, and I'll show you 
how you can avoid this kind of problem. Another thing that is very, very effective is simply checking the temperature. I'm going to go back. I'm going to give you a, a this is free. This doesn't cost you anything. If I have a, a machine that will not boot, I have a PC that will not boot, or I have a PC that is very, very erratic, one of the first things that I do is apply power. Uh, let's say your CPU is in, your RAM is in. I simply take my finger and I start touching the tops of all the major chips. I start just taking my finger. What am I looking for? I'm looking for something really hot. hot. Because anything that gets really hot shouldn't be. If it's really hot, it should have a what on the top of it. Okay, so if there is something that I go in there and I'm touching those chips and I go, oh, ow, that one is warm. Yes? It's plastic. It's a plastic component. And it's so hot I can't touch it. Guess what? We're done. Go get another motherboard. Was that scientific or genius? No, it's understanding how to troubleshoot. Now, caution. You just heard me say that. If it's red and glowing, <laughs> touch it. Don't take your finger. Mr. B told us stick your finger on the top of. Yes. If it's glowing red. I wouldn't advise you to touch it, okay? I, I would just highly recommend you find another way to troubleshoot. But simple things like looking at capacitors, looking at to see their, their thing, are really helpful, very, very powerful ways of chip. I love temperature checking. You, I, you can't imagine. I have people with hard drives. They'll say, well, it's acting really, really, really strange. So I'll slide it out very gently with the power on, with it spinning, and I'll touch all the chips on the circuit board on the on the hard drive. And many, many times I'll touch a controller chip or a air checking chip and it's way too hot. Guess what? We gotta go get another hard drive. There's no brilliance here. It's simple. Chips only should get so hot. Yes? So when you go into the BIOS and you check the temperatures, that's not gonna come up? Many times it won't tell you that. The, that's an excellent point. Biases many times give you real-time temperatures, but they don't give you the temperature of every chip. Yes? They may give you the temperature of, say, the North Bridge. This one doesn't have one. Uh, they may give you the temperature of the North Bridge and maybe the CPU, and that's it. Everything else, touch. Okay? So those are going to be the kinds of things that we're going to pay attention to and learn in addition to our CompTIA track. CMOS batteries, front panel controls, all of those things we're going to look at. In your handout, take a look at it. In your handout, I have the six CompTIA steps for troubleshooting. Guess what you need to memorize? Six steps. You must learn the six CompTIA steps for troubleshooting. You must learn them by heart. So there they are. They're in your notes. You must learn those. Mr. Vanderbilt, can I save that until the week before the exam? The answer is yes. Will I use these as a technician? In all honesty, most of you that are logical thinkers and good troubleshooters already, you already do this. This is a very natural process. But because it's kind of written in a way that is not maybe natural to your normal process, you must learn this by heart before you take the exam. Okay? Most of you probably do most of these steps already if you do troubleshooting. Don't have to learn them right now. On the other page, basic tools for assembly and disassembly. Um, Tomorrow morning, I am going to walk you through tools. Some of you have never used tools. Some of you, if I gave you a tool and said, tell me what it is, this would not be good, yes? 
If I pulled out a toolkit and I said identify each tool in here, uh, some of you, when I watch you take apart a laptop, it is scary. <laughs> okay? Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about tools and make sure that you're on the right track. Now listen to me very carefully. Uh, Jose, I'm, you, can, you can turn it off. Um, if 